just going to slow down for a second. As I seem to be losing speed, and I'm not entirely certain why. sitting comfortably was the engine management unit mounted on top of the engine had activated the engine safe mode and reduced the power engine safe mode is commonly activated when the computer senses a high temperature reading in either the engine core or a low oil pressure however according to the instrumentation these readings were normal the third common reason is high reading in the exhaust temperature sensor. By temporarily disconnecting these sensors, the fault went away. This confirmed that the exhaust was getting too hot. The cooling system on this engine draws in seawater from the CERN drive and circulates this through the engine before pumping it out through the exhaust. If the pump fails for any reason, there will be insufficient water pumping through the exhaust. The pump is mounted on the front of the crankshaft pulley and as can be seen here, even with the engine off, it is leaking a significant amount of water. There are two seals in the pump and this leaking indicates that one or both of them have failed. This may also indicate that the rubber impeller inside the pump may also have failed. A brand new genuine pump is priced at £530. An aftermarket pump can be obtained for £140, but there are reports on numerous forums regarding the poor quality of some of these. I decided to go for an overhaul kit at just £40, which includes the impeller and bearing, but most importantly, the inner shaft seal and the casing o-ring seal. So, first task of the day, the pump is way down there. And the back of the engine, this hose here is the main feed from the drive leg, which is down that way. It goes into the oil cooler and down across the side of the engine. Now, this part here is below the water line. So what I intend to do is disconnect this hose from up here um, and that way the only water that should be spilling out is what's already in the pipe. We shouldn't actually be getting anything coming in from outside.
and as you can see, clearly that seal has failed. That's actually the pump face, that's the drive face. And you can see quite clearly that has failed big time and the bearing has now gone. So we're gonna basically pull the bearing out, clean up the casing, put a new seal in. The, uh, the actual impeller that came out is actually still in very good condition. So to be honest, I'll probably put that back in exactly as it was. So clearly it's in it's a genuine Volvo Penta part. It's in good condition. So I think the um, the lack of water was purely because of the fact that it was just leaking pressure couldn't be built up properly. The um, actual pump body as well is in good condition. Uh, an interesting little design feature, it's actually quite sensible, these little rubber o-rings around the bolt mean that you can take the bolt out, undo it, and it doesn't actually drop out of the hole, so you don't end up dropping it down into the bilge. Quite an ingenious little uh, saving device. The bearing carrier should be a tight fit onto the main shaft. But the carrier came away easily, and as can be seen here, there is a fair bit of corrosion on the shaft and the main bearing surface. This will need to be cleaned up before the bearing can be pressed back into place. Unfortunately, as the three mounting bolts have corroded, this will need to be done in situ. With the bearing carrier on the workbench, the inner rubber seal was removed, noting the direction of the grooved side. Then the circlip was removed from the housing. Due to the corrosion, it wasn't possible to simply press the old bearing out. It took nearly three hours with the use of a heat torch to expand the bronze casing and lots of careful tapping with a hammer and punch before the bearing came free. With the casing now stripped down, I use fine grade emery paper to clean the pump face using the flat anvil surface at the back of the bench vise. Some steel wool was also used to clean the outer surface of the casing. Again, emery paper was used to clean the bearing seat before a light coating of automotive bearing grease. The bearing could then be pressed into place. Followed by the positioning of the new circlip in order to retain the bearing in place. Finally, the new inner seal was fitted just by pressing into place and pushing home just with finger pressure only.
before reinstalling the bearing unit, the drive shaft and bearing surface of the pulley are cleaned up using a medium emery cloth. The bearing carrier was packed with marine grade grease before being fitted onto the shaft. Gentle tapping with a hammer pushes the bearing tightly onto the shaft. Remember to fit the new o-ring seal into the groove onto the bearing carrier itself. Despite my earlier comments regarding reusing the Impella, I decided to use the new one and keep the original as a good spare. The water-based lubricant is applied to the new Impella and to the inside of the pump body. It is important to avoid using oil-based products as this can deteriorate the rubber quickly. The Impella is simply pushed in with a slight twisting action. Once in place, the rest of the lubricant is used to protect the Impella at first start-up. A coating of marine grease is applied to the pump retaining bracket. The pump can then be pushed into place and the bolts lined up with the bearing case. When tightening these bolts it is important to do this in a rotational sequence to ensure that the pump body is pulled down evenly. All that remains is to reattach the water hoses and start the engine and check for leaks. I also took the opportunity to fit an inline valve to the main water feed hose to make future maintenance easier.